Hi guys, I watched a video yesterday and I almost fell off my chair when this person said something. Okay, first, first of all though, let me tell you that my sister in Christ who has the YouTube channel called Jesus Saves Moses Jr. and I'm going to put the link to her video in the description box. Okay, she saw the same thing that I did yesterday, and she did a video about it, and it inspired me to do one too. As soon as I finished watching hers, it was like the Holy Spirit just grabbed hold of me and said, you do one too. So here I am, I'm doing one, and the, the video that we watched was by someone that's very popular on YouTube. He's a real popular guy, does news updates every day, and I love him. He's my brother in Christ, and I love him, but he said a couple of things that really disturbed me sometimes. And, you know, basically I agree with everything he says, and, um, but, but he says a couple of things that are very disturbing. Now, I, just, I haven't just, like, been studying prophecy for a week or so or something. It's been almost seven years that I've been intensely being a, a watchwoman <laughs> and, and studying the Scripture and the Bible prophecies. The Lord woke me up and He called me to it almost seven years ago. So I, it's not like I just started studying this yesterday. I'm not claiming I'm some authority on it or anything. Don't get me wrong. I'm not, and if I say anything wrong, I want somebody to correct me. But I'm just saying that I didn't just start studying it yesterday. So when he says a couple of things, I know that they're wrong, and I'm tired of just keeping my mouth closed about it. And I just want to go with my sister in Christ, her video yesterday, and I want to let people know that he did say something that was very wrong again. And what was wrong was he was quoting Daniel 9.27, where the Antichrist is making the peace treaty, okay? And it says, and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. Okay, this person said that the he that shall confirm the covenant with many is not the Antichrist. And that's very, very wrong. It's dead wrong. Okay, it says, and he shall confirm the covenant. That's verse 27. He who, if you skip back to the previous verse, verse 26, it says the prince that shall come. Now the prince that shall come, you guys, is the Antichrist. I'm sorry, I love this guy, but he's very wrong in this. And as my sister pointed out, sister in Christ pointed out in her video, it says he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And then that there's a follow-up sentence to that. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease, etc. Okay, he's the one that causes the sacrifices to cease. Okay, he is the Antichrist. And I watch, my hobby is to watch preachers. I watch several sermons a day and I have for a long time. That's my hobby is I like to watch preachers. I like to learn more and more about Bible prophecy as much as I can. I'm just really hungry for it. I'm hungry for the Word of God, and I'm hungry to learn more about prophecy. So I watch a lot of preachers, and i just like to tell you that this is the only person, the person that said this yesterday in their video, that said that he is not the Antichrist. Okay, he, he it's widely acknowledged that this person is the Antichrist. The one that signs the covenant is the Antichrist. He is, and I've never heard anybody else claim that he's not, except for this person that did yesterday. Everybody concurs. <laughs> we all concur that this is speaking about the Antichrist, the prince that shall come. This is the Antichrist. So, um, okay, I just wanted to say that. And I just also wanted to add that this person, I also heard this person say a week or two ago, that he believes we're in the fifth seal and we're about the, the sixth seal is about to happen. And I'm sorry, but that's very wrong. We are not in the fifth seal. We, the, the peace treaty has not even been signed yet. We are not in the tribulation. Those happen in the tribulation. The signing of the peace treaty from that second forward, that kicks off the tribulation. That kicks off the seven-year tribulation. So we can't possibly be in the seals. 
Now we're seeing some things that are like the seals, but this is just like a foreshadowing of what is to come. That's what we're seeing. It's a foreshadowing of those seals that will happen during the tribulation, but we're not waiting on the sixth seal. Okay, this is if you're pre-trib, I'm firmly pre-trib, and I don't get into arguments with people who are or, or aren't pre-trib. If you're post-trib, you know, okay, if, if you want to believe your God, <laughs> if, you, if you guys want to post-tribbers, and, and if you want to believe that we're going to go through all that suffering here and everything, you know, you're welcome to believe that. It's wrong, but you're welcome to believe it, and I'm not going to argue with anyone about it. But um, if you're a pre-tribber, then you believe that we're gonna we're gonna be raptured before that peace treaty is signed. That's what kicks off the tribulation. Okay, and my sister in Christ was also talking about um, that the Lord had revealed to her who the Antichrist was, and you know I. Okay, everybody says that the Antichrist won't be revealed until after the rapture. And you know, the Bible does say that, but I agree with her interpretation also that that could mean that the Antichrist, who the Antichrist is won't be generally revealed to the masses of people. Like that could mean, I agree with her 110%, that could mean that not everyone will know who he is but listen, we can suspect who he is. We're so close to the tribulation. We can have suspicions of who he is, and we can have thoughts about who he is. And so many people have received dreams from the Lord, okay? And I have too. And I'm like her. The Lord spoke to my heart also, and I really do think that it's the person she thinks that it is and uh, <laughs> I also agree with her when she said that the Lord has a great sense of humor with that you know the abomination of desolation God has a real good sense of humor okay <laughs> I got a really big kick about that actually there's a book that came out a couple of years ago called abomination and I just had to really giggle when I saw that hit the bookstores um, and also, you know, I'm another thing I'm tired of people saying is that people are always saying, well, I'm not looking for the Antichrist, I'm looking for Jesus Christ. Well, yes, you know, we're all looking for Jesus Christ. But that's not to negate the idea that it's bad to look for the Antichrist. Because listen, just like my sister said, if we know who the Antichrist is, if God has revealed that to us, then that shows us how close we are to the rapture as we see him doing different things and different events occurring. That shows us that the perfect demonstration of how close we are to the rapture. So I don't think there's anything a bit wrong with looking for who the Antichrist is. I mean, you know, you don't need to make it your full-time occupation, but there's nothing wrong with keeping your, just kind of keeping your eye on who you think he is or something and speculating on who he is, you know, and the Lord has revealed so many dreams and given so many dreams to people on YouTube. And, you know, they're not all, all dreams are not from the Lord, but I think, you know, this one individual, God has given so many dreams and revealed so much about him to others that, you know, I really think there's something to that. Maybe it could be someone else. Maybe not, but I, you know, I have a lot of understanding for what my sister is saying because, like I said, the Lord revealed to me things about this person too. And, um, okay, I just wanted to get on here and say this, and I just wanted to say that, you know, no matter, I don't care if you're listening to an ordained preacher or whoever, you know, you need to be a Berean, you need to search the scriptures for yourself, because even an ordained pastor of 40 years or something, that doesn't mean that they're right on every single issue. You have to study, if you, if you have any doubts over what they're telling you, you need to read the Word. You need to get into the Word and read for yourself and check what they're saying. Be a Berean, check Scripture for yourself. Because I don't care how popular they are, I don't care how well known they are, I don't care how well studied they are. 
they can be wrong. They can make a mistake and they can be wrong. And so you just need to check it for yourself. And I thank you, my dear sister. And thank you for doing your video so much. And I'm going to put the link to her video in the, the, the description box below. And God bless you guys. Be careful who you listen to. And Jesus is coming very soon. Keep looking up. Thank you for listening. God bless you all.